today. It is September 17th and I didn't have to look at the calendar. September 17th is one of my favorite days. It's the day I met the first boy I completely fell in love with head over heels. Rocked my world 30 years and he still does. I love that guy more than ever. So it's my son's birthday. Happy birthday, Dee. I love you. Oh my goodness. I know you, you who are parents understand that feeling of that kind of love. And now he's an adult, which is really cool because he's, of course, of course, one of the coolest, most interesting and magnificent people I've ever met. And I'm so glad that I got to give birth to him because then I get to know him. And I'm probably biased here. He was really the most amazing kid. He was such a great kid. He was a total typical teenager. <laughs> but he was such a great kid. And he has become such an amazing man. He's done that not because I was such an awesome parent. I think people just kind of are who they are and you nurture them but they are who they are i love my son happy birthday i hope your day is amazing <laughs> anyway you ready Ooh, this is interesting the lazy susan self the god in us is not half presence there is no screening who we are for years I have lived this way, turning the side of me to others that they could understand, spinning the aspects of my true self like a lazy Susan, offering only what others wanted or needed or felt most comfortable with. Did I write this? Did you write this? Have we all done this? I think we all do this. My cat just snuck in. I became very good at this, could spin in a crowd of loved ones accommodating many needs at once. I came to believe that I was being selfless, an agile listener, reliable and giving. I thought I had found a way to be both who I am and considerate. What I didn't realize was that more and more of who I truly am was being hidden and that showing only the part of me that others found acceptable was not being true to myself. Over time, I became a spy with my deepest feelings and beliefs. The cost eventually was a subtle but ever-present spiritual suffocation. No one asked me to do this. Certainly, I have had wounds in my history that conditioned me to hide myself at times, but it was my own misperception of how to negotiate the world that made an art form of changing faces, even though all the faces unto themselves were true. I have a cat trying to get up on my arm right now. Fear of conflict, fear of rejection, fear of not being loved, fear of showing what I believed no one else could possibly understand, a lack of trust and faith that the flower inside me could survive the elements out here. All this stayed unaddressed for years while I spun my lazy Mark self. Remember his name is Mark, not Susan. Susan. <laughs> I watch too many kid movies. Okay, this cat is, I told you she demands love. As we live it, the line between privacy and hiddenness is very thin indeed. I have learned painfully and thoroughly that each of us is an entire symphony. And though there are times when all of us will not be heard, disease begins the moment all of us is not played. Get it? Disease. Mindful kitty moment. Sit quietly and meditate on one aspect of who you are that you turn away from others. It might be your gentleness or your silliness or your sense of doubt or your sense of dream. Breathe slowly and ask yourself, <laughs> this cat is ridiculous. <laughs> breathe slowly and ask yourself, breathe slowly and ask yourself, what 
is it you fear might happen if you let this part of you be seen? <laughs> Kitty! Breathe deeply and lower yourself into the center of your heart, into the place where this precious aspect lives. Breathe freely now in the safety of this moment. Be still and try to breathe this precious part of you out into the room. Note how it feels to have such a precious part of you move through you, from your heart into the air. Well, this is kind of amazing. In many of the spiritual practices that I enjoy, anything from yoga, shamanism, breathing is always such a big factor. It seems that Westerners, probably most especially Americans, do not understand or do not appreciate how amazing breathing can be. Proper breathing, focused breathing, there's so many different kinds. Even just five count or seven count, like breathe in for five counts, hold for five counts, exhale for five counts. You do that for a minute, it will radically change what's going on in your body and mind. Try it. Pick a number that you like. I usually do seven. I don't have amazing lung capacity, so seven feels comfortable for me, but that's what I choose. Seven counts in while I inhale, seven counts holding, and then seven counts on the exhale and then seven counts holding. My lungs fully emptied. I do that for a couple of minutes. It's some good stuff. It's good stuff. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. I appreciate all of you that do. I'm still gonna keep doing it. I'm starting to get the hang of some things like I understand how to work my phone now. I got lighting under control except for that. It goes off so you can't see it. Did you see yesterday I figured out time lapse for my tea making? How rad was that? I am so amazed at what you can do with a cell phone. This would have been a full scale production even 10 years ago, probably. These little crazy devices we have in our pockets are pretty amazing. And they're fun. It's fun to learn a new skill. Brain plasticity. Your brain gets kind of like crunchy and and so you gotta learn new things. Learn it. Just do it. Have a great day. I love you and I wish you all the things that you... Mm, I wish you all the happiness you can handle today.